Hi, it's me, it's Phil, and um, I thought I'd take a slightly different tack on my video today and talk about the journey that I've been on for the last 16 years. Yep, 16 years. So, yeah, it just came to mind that I needed to kind of get this story out tell it to other people, share my thoughts, share my experiences, and uh, just be honest about um, what I've been doing, why I've been doing it, and uh, I think what I'm gonna do now, how I'm gonna move on. So, it goes like this, is, um, yeah, so, well, I guess the, thing, the best thing to say is I'm gonna, yeah, God, ugh. Um, I started all gardening, basically, because I had this idea, and I guess every company starts when you put your name to an idea, and, yeah, I came back from a, a day in the office, I was being paid extraordinarily well to be a e-commerce consultant for a global company. That company was called RS Components and I was being asked to assist with the digital transformation. Consider this was 16 years ago, so digital transformation and in the industry that is now is wasn't really there, but I was kind of introduced to this company and asked if I could help um, bring their fledgling e-commerce business that was worth, I guess, about 40 million at the time into their $4 billion global company, fundamentally putting the full scale pivot into Iris components um, and uh, making it into the businesses it is today, which is absolutely extraordinary what they are. Basically, Iris components sells widgets, stuff, things, electronics, the bits that go inside Componentry to everything from garages, manufacturers, schools, you name it, all over the place. Anyway, so I I joined that company and I worked for them, I think, for about um, eight months. And it was after a, a five-year stint at a, a big dot-com um, called QXL Ricardo, where we took on eBay with $200 million investment. And um, yeah, at, Q, at QXL, I had this extraordinary experience I worked with some extraordinary people and um, yeah, decided that I'd move on from there and uh, to RS Components. Now the funny thing is, when I walked into RS Components, <laughs> the thing that made me laugh the most was I knew that I was taking on a bit of a corporate role, but when I walked into this initial meeting, when I'd got the job, everyone, there were three people I met, we all had the same colour suit on and we all had the same colour shirt on and we all had the same colour tie on. And my God, I just went, what have I done? Is that I'd actually joined the company assuming that I'd be free to carry on building companies, supporting companies, supporting companies' growth. And uh, instead I walked into an environment where I was expected to say nothing for 18 months, observe the politics of the company, and uh, yeah, toe the line. And it didn't take me long to realize that, that that wasn't for me. I wasn't interested in towing the line. I'd always wanted to do my own thing. And uh, yeah, so one day I basically came home. This is how all gardening started. I came home disgruntled, didn't know what I was doing, why I was doing it. And uh, I had a calm chat with my, my gardener who was busy making something look absolutely beautiful. And uh, I just said to her, I said, seeing as most of my garden is lawn, I don't suppose you can make it look absolutely extraordinary. I mean, make it look like a football pitch, make it look just beautiful. And, uh, and then look after the other stuff and basically, you know, I'll give you a budget for the other bits um, to make it look great every time a new season came around and uh, her words to me were it doesn't work like that 
And um, for the life of me, I just all went. So my garden's a, pre a predictable size of garden. It's a predictable use pattern. It's a predictable growth pattern. It's highly predictable what the season's going to be like. It was in northwest London. You know, why, why, why can't you just um, measure the lawn, come up with a price and then pay on subscription? Now, 16 years ago, it was long before the subscription economy as well. It, it, you know, you used to take out subscriptions on magazines, but you didn't take out subscriptions on, you know, services. I mean, services big like garden, lawn, handyman services. It wasn't really known. So I came up with this idea 16 years ago that basically, wouldn't it be great if you use satellites, satellite mapping? Because keep in mind, that it was the early days of... Um, GPS and in-car navigation systems, but in theory, based on I saw, went, oh, you must be able to map a plot of land. Now, I then kind of had this thought, and I literally walked from my house to my gardener and walked out with the chat of my gardener, and I walked down to the estate agents, and I said to the estate agents, could you tell me whether this is true, that every garden in Pinner, which is in northwest London, is a different size? And he turned around to me and said, no, they're basically three sizes of plots in Pinner, big, small, and extra large. And I sort of said, huh, okay. So assuming that most of the properties on those are big, small, or extra large, you can assume what the garden is. And his point was, yeah, it's good theory. I guess that would work. So, yeah, so I then decided, by, I don't even know how I actually came up with the idea, I don't know why I did it, but I decided that basically I'd build this business called All Gardening, and I'd call it All Gardening because everyone had a garden, everyone had access to some form of gardening, and um, I'd become obsessed with lawns, because I kind of had this hunch that basically every garden that contains 92% of it is lawn, statistically and factually that's nearly accurate, is that if I can work out what it takes to look after those lawns, only those lawns, then there's going to be a pretty good business there. So that's what I did. I think I, think I went from that's an idea, to I'll buy a spade, to I'll get a van, so I hired my first lawn technician and within basically three years I built it from a lawn business to a lawn and garden business to a lawn and landscaping business doing everything from lawn treatments, lawn mowing, lawn maintenance prog programs, new lawns, the landscaping around lawns the features and buildings around the lawns. I think they call it lawnscaping. That's what I called it back in the day. And uh, yeah, I built it. I built a CRM system on Access before Access was being used for a CRM system. Before there were cloud-based CRM systems. And I went from 30 odd customers in April the 19th, 2004 to I don't know, thousands of inquiries and hundreds of clients at any given point and seven vans and 20 odd staff and an office and lockups and equipment and I did it all in the matter of three years. Went from no turnover to 800 odd turnover to a couple of million turnover And uh, yeah, and then, and then here's the crazy thing, is I then got completely smashed by a couple of, a couple of sequences that happened, and it's worth sharing, because no big idea happens by chance, and no big idea happens with, without effort, and to some extent, I've never run away from the big idea, but the big idea was 
to build a business that connected the gardens of the world and the gardens fundamentally being 92% of them being lawns. That's what my absolute obsession was, is I was going to build that business. And I started building it until the recession of 2007, 8, 9, 10 came along. And I'd kind of over-traded. i would got too big a bit too fast. And I guess I'd bottled it a bit is the best thing to say is I'd thought I'd gone too far, too fast. I didn't trust myself. I wasn't ready for the success. I know that sounds crazy, but when you build a business that people want and they start to gravitate around you because people like moving towards successful people because successful people make people successful, is I got scared. I think I got scared of the... uh, the interest, the attraction, and I didn't want it. And it took me best part of, I think it took me best part of five years between say 2010 and 2015 to gradually, gradually kill my ambition, my big idea. I kind of just gradually started to sort of think that I didn't enjoy it, I didn't deserve it, it wasn't what I wanted, the way I'd built it, I didn't really see the value in it and uh, I didn't really see how happy it could have made me or how happy it makes me or how happy today I think I could be if I'd built it. It's say, but I've never given up building it, I've never given up building it and uh, Over the last month, I've been reflecting on the journey that I've had, what I've learned, the knowledge I have about building a small business, about building it into a bigger business, about how those steps change and how they change you and how they change people around you and what you have to do to be ready for that success. And I think, um, Yeah, you have to be ready for it. You have to plan for it. You have to see it. You have to embrace it. It's something that not everyone wants and not everyone can build. But as my wife said to me the other day, is my business has gone through periods of growth and periods of decline and periods of me killing it. And uh, it's never stopped being relevant. How about that? It's never stopped being relevant is that people still want to care about something. The gardens of the world will keep growing and lawns will keep growing and uh, people will always want a reliable service that makes them feel better about something they invest in so heavily, which is their property. Their property, their home, their castle, however you see it. So I've gone through this little journey and I kind of think I'm coming to the end of it, which is It's time to start building the business I dreamt of 15 years ago with other people who have the same ambitions, the same dreams of freedom, independence, happiness, satisfaction, the relationship you can have with people you work for and you work with can make you richer. It makes you not financially richer because that doesn't always drive the great ideas. Well, it certainly doesn't drive my great idea, being richer. Otherwise, I'd be a multi-millionaire by now because I'd absolutely be smashing it because I knew what I was doing. But let's get this, okay? Is that I am coming back. I'm going to build it again. I'm going to build it better, I'm going to build it stronger, I'm going to make it more robust, I'm going to be some, make it something that people want to invest in, I want to build it into something that people want to be part of, that's customers, that's franchisees, that's business partners, whatever it may be, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to build it in two parts, one is basically the big idea I always had was, 
you can measure, calculate, and establish what goes into a garden. You can do it through two reasons. One is basically market research, which I've done lots of. And the other thing is you can use artificial intelligence, AI, to use a bit of mapping from Google and actually establish what makes up a garden, what its constitutions are, what the weather in that area is, how it will change, the typography and all sorts of other stuff, the hydrology of an area, how water travels around a prop. You can work that all out, it can be assisted with air, and I'm going to try and build that, I'm going to try and build it with a good friend of mine, Raj Sharman, and um, alongside that I'm going to try and build the Lawn Care franchise because I think that's where it starts is that everyone, huge amounts of people have a lawn, 22 million people have a lawn, and what a lawn does is it gives you opportunities to be sociable, impress people, have big barbecues, have great parties. It's 92% of the pleasure of having a property. That's my book. So I'm gonna build that lawn franchise and I'm gonna try and build it as gracefully as I can with the people that are interested and I'm sure there's lots of people there's 22 million lawns and not all of them want chemicals on their lawns a lot of people want someone who appreciates what they are who they are how they value their property and what they want from their garden and lawn I'm going to build that and if along the way other bits appear you know all gardening could pick up not only the lawn service but it could pick up again a planting and a plant installation service which I messed around with, a compost delivery service that I messed around with, a landscaping and building company that I messed around with, an e-commerce online direct consumer delivery company that I messed around with. You know, I think it's all there to be built. And uh, this video is me sharing my intention to do so. So, that's it that's what i wanted to share today 17 20 minutes of chat if you've been with me through the whole conversation absolutely awesome if you want to basically touch base with me and have a chat absolutely awesome if you want to talk lawns landscaping gardens ground care whatever trees then connect with me um if you want advice about how to build a business, how to start a business, what you're gonna do and how you're gonna go wrong. If ever you're a little bit nervous about making decisions about cash flow, God, I have, and it's held me back flipping 12 years. You know, the only way you can push forward is to take a deep breath, be very patient, be very clear, and then go for it. So, as a good friend of mine also said, today and there's been two moments one is Nick Warren said to me it looks like you're happy looking after lawns talking about lawns and talking about gardens well you know what it does make me bloody happy it does and I can't avoid that the second one was another friend of mine Thomas Power said to me let go of the demons of the past they are holding you back and Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Anyway, so thank you for being with me for these 18, 19 minutes. And thank you for joining me. And I do hope that you subscribe to my channel and watch me as I build. I'll share the stories, the aggro, the grief, the celebrations, the parties, the adventure, going global going local, whatever, I've got no idea. But subscribe, join me, hit the button, have a comment, have a share. Let's build a community. Let's build a community that care about the environment because most of the world, if you look at it from my perspective, it's just one big garden. We're all gardening and we've got to look after it. Because if we don't start looking after it, as my daughter said to me this morning, we've got 18 months to start looking after our planet. And I think that's what we should start doing, okay? So I'm gonna start building it from the green stuff and I hope you guys can join me. Anyway, that's it, 20 minutes.
Ta-da. Take care. Be awesome. Enjoy life. And be happy. <laughs>